Hi everyone, this is Nancy L.T. Hamilton and this video is how to apply gold, real gold, to the surface of copper, brass, bronze, and sterling silver uh, in a really easy technique that's kind of evolved after I read an article by Chris Darway in uh, Art Jewelry Magazine from March of 2016. I kind of took his description of the technique, tried working through the technique, and then removed a bunch of stuff that I didn't feel were necessary and ended up with this technique for applying gold to the base metals and sterling silver. Uh, this is video short as opposed to video long. The longer version I demonstrate how I came to the process and the ideas that I had along the way. So there's a lot more information in it but this is the down and dirty. This is how you do it. It's really simple. Enjoy. The first thing that we need to do is talk briefly about what tools and materials. I'm going to be using Accent Gold for Silver in this portion. You can also use Aura 22. The Accent is a 24 karat gold. This is not the same stuff that you buy at a craft store. Um, they run about 70 to 80 dollars because they are real gold. So don't mistake them for like gilding stuff from Michaels or whatever. Next thing you're going to need is a torch. You're going to need some metal. I'm going to use copper. Copper is a great way to start because it has a much higher melting temperature than sterling. So it'll help you to perfect the technique without completely melting down your metal. Um, we need clean metal. This is obviously dirty and my favorite way to clean is to use a torch. So just to clean it, I just heat the metal up until it goes gray, which is essentially annealing temperature for copper. And then this gets quenched, thrown in the pickle, neutralized, rinsed, and dried thoroughly. So you get going on that while I uh, finish up. So here's my clean metal, and I've painted on a rather ugly uh, pattern with my Accent Gold Silver, which is 24 karat paintable gold. So now what I need to do is let this dry um, I'm going to let it air dry. I don't any heat could potentially oxidize the metal, so we don't want to we don't want to add any problems in the form of oxidation. So we'll just let it air dry. I'll come back. I'll torch it and show you how it works. Okay, we're dry. Got our Iwatani big torch head here and our butane fuel cartridge. You could use acetylene or propane. Um, this is what I'm using and I like this big wide torch that, that comes with this so if you're going to use acetylene or pro propane make sure you use the largest tip you have you want to keep the oxygen out of the way here and the flame is burning up the oxygen so as long as the flame is over where we're trying to join the metals it should work. You want to keep your pieces rather small because of this. You'll see the gold start to glow. I hope. It's out. And now right before the metal starts to melt, which with copper it takes quite a bit, we pull off. And you can come back in you can wait till the gold flows and actually becomes liquefied, but there's a greater chance of um, accidentally alloying with the base metal underneath. So I like to stop right before that part. I'm going to turn some ventilation here, which should have been on in the first place, Nancy. Okay, so this gets pickled, and then after neutralizing and rinsing brass brush and dried and uh, I'll show you some tricks. Here's our gold. I'm going to put it in the super pickle now and that's going to take off hopefully some of this copper that's kind of joined in to the gold. So now I'm going to do sterling silver. Big flame. This might be difficult because it's a larger piece. I'm hoping I can 
keep the flame on the gold. The nice thing about this is I can see what's happening with the silver underneath. It starts to get glossy, or in that case, collapse. Get out of there. Oops, silver's starting to get wet looking. Just flick your torch out, let it cool for a second. All right, I'm gonna stop there. With the silver, it's kind of hairy to go all the way until the gold liquefies because the silver melts at such a close temperature to the gold. So I stop before it gets there because otherwise I'm just going to end up with two molten metals. Um, so we're going to pickle this and then I'm going to show you the next trick. For this part of the process, what this does is takes off any copper that's sitting that kind of got you know alloyed with the gold um, and kind of cleans up so that the gold's a little more prevalent so uh, first thing we need to do is get some pickle a uh, hot pickle so I use a turkey baster to get pickle out of my pickle pot tilting it back here now this uh, super pickle works best when it's really hot. Don't forget to rinse your um, turkey baster in a neutralizing bath and then once again in clear water. Okay, so now we're gonna pour about an equal amount of hydrogen peroxide into the pickle. Give it a little stir. As you can see, there's lots and lots and lots of bubbles. Well, that's the super pickle eating the way copper. Um, if anybody knows what those shooty streaks are, I'd love to know. So I leave this in, depending on how active your super pickle is, maybe five, 10 minutes. Keep an eye on it. The super pickle will mat your metal. Uh, it puts minute pits on the metal because it's anything with copper in it will have that happen but I'm I haven't done this yet but I'm pretty sure that if you threw it in a tumbler it would shine up again if you want it or you can use this to its best advantage and enjoy having a matte finish on your work um, a couple things if your gold looks dull like it does on the silver here and you're pretty dang sure you've heated it enough for it to adhere sometimes it just needs a little burnishing via sandpaper works um, you can start to see it's getting shiny burnishers will really bring up the shine tumbling see how shiny that's getting up there so all is not lost if it's dull and the other thing, oh, like on Mickey here, he's got some lumpy areas, like in here, but I didn't want to sand down too far. Um, I can actually put another layer of gold on here and refire it again. So here's some of the pieces that I've done. This one is already burnished. I like how that turned out with the gold down on the dots. Um, just in case you don't know burnishing. Basically, rubbing a steel or agate tool over the gold or silver, you can do it with any of them, and it just polishes it up. And then the big guy here, I wanted to take some of the liver off because the silver is pretty too. So I can do sandpaper. This is 400 grit. This will also polish up the gold but I've already burnished that gold. So that looks pretty cool. One last word. Um, when using these pieces in soldered work, you want to uh, first apply the gold and then use low melting, so lower melting solders like medium and easy to put everything together. Uh, the piece can then be super pickled to remove any oxidation that may have formed in the gold areas. This is also a great process for cast pieces. 
it's also fabulous for enameling to apply translucent enamels over the top. Other methods of attachment would be uh, rivets, bolts, tabs, screws, things like that. Bezels even. So think outside the box and incorporate gold into your work. So that's the end of the video. I really appreciate you coming. I hope you learned something. Um, it's a, I think it's a really cool technique and it's a great way to add the warmth of gold to your work inexpensively and very easily, in my humble opinion. Um, just remember the big thing is keeping oxidation off, so charcoal and a large tipped torch and you should be good to go. Happy creating. Ciao.